Hey fam, welcome back to For You It's Cute, but I wouldn't wear it. <laughs> Just kidding. Today I would like five to ten minutes of your time to talk about Crane Girl in conversations that don't help with making friends or trivia. On April 26, 2017, a call was made to the Toronto Police Department at about 3.45, 3.30 in the morning, reporting that a woman had appeared on a crane suspended 30 meters or in excess of 100 feet in the air. Um, The woman had climbed up the crane, had slid down, and rested herself on, it's like, I don't know what you would call it, like a pulley or a hook, but there will be a picture of it somewhere. So um, she had slid down and got there, and then the police showed up. So it basically like stopped stopped traffic and everybody was like kind of freaking out about it. There was loads of memes, like tons of really funny memes were popping up all over the morning and people were like, who is this? Who is this lady? And she became known as Crane Girl. Crane Girl's real name is Marissa Lazo. At the time she was in her early 20s, like 20, 20, uh, 22, 23. Um, she was a student at a downtown college in Toronto and she was liked by friends she was just a very like kind of average normal girl so people wanted to know like who is she like why did this girl climb up a crane is this a stunt like what's going on over here sort of thing so when people wanted to figure out who is marissa lazo they kind of looked through her social media and there was a lot of pictures that were popping up of her like laying on railroad tracks and her standing on top of different types of buildings and she was known as a roof topper, which is like an extreme sort of very illegal sport that people have taken an interest in, especially um, on social media where people climb buildings or do very dangerous, reckless things for the thrill seeking advantage. So she very quickly like shut down her Instagram and everything like that as soon as she started noticing that the news was perpetuating this discourse on her of that she was um, she did it all for attention. But she disappeared right after the event, right up until her sentencing. So everything was sort of a speculation at that point. The moral panics that the news and the police department put out, it was a lot like when they used to make fun of, um, or quicksand used to be this big thing in TV shows and movies back in the day where people were led to believe that quicksand was this like huge danger when actually I looked it up. And I don't think anyone has ever died from quicksand. And it's not, and you couldn't die from quicksand the way that they show it on TV, but it was very that. So like all the time on the news, they were saying like, oh my God, what are the kids doing? What are the kids doing? Like the kids are climbing things. But since then, I believe there's been like one instance of a woman being charged um, with climbing something. And that was more because she damaged the property, not because there was any danger. But that sort of like fizzled out after a couple a couple of weeks. But there was that there was definitely like a time period there for about a month where it was like everybody was freaking out about these um, urban daredevils. And to comp- like to sort of explain how different this case was than other sort of daredevils or social media personalities, um, another person I want to bring up is Chair Girl, who was this awful lady um, who threw a chair off of a balcony in downtown Toronto um, a year or two after the Crane Girl incident. And she had done it specifically to sort of pump up her uh, social media presence. So, and at the present date, she has like over 200,000 Instagram followers. She makes six figures a year with an OnlyFans account. Um, And she's just like a very sort of like, I don't know, like kind of no offense to her, but I also don't care. But like, she's just a very like, ugh sort of person. So I want to just like be very clear that Crane Girl was much different than chair girl in that this was a much deeper experience which i'll talk about in just a second so what happened so on april 25th i guess april 25th marissa had gone out drinking in the church wellesley village which is kind of like the gay village in toronto and she had stayed out probably to last call like if you look up the timeline it makes sense Um, and the construction site is right next to or very very close by where the main bars are on the strip and even though it's the gay village um, it's a very popular spot for a lot of young women especially in their early 20s to go out and like I don't know maybe she's gay maybe she's not it doesn't really matter but that's where she was out having a drink or two and as she was going home she saw the crane um, and decided that she wanted to go up take a selfie just for herself um, at the top of the crane she'd actually slipped on um, slipped while she was climbing and fell 
but grabbed onto the pulley and managed to slide herself down where she sat on like the hook pulley whatever thing and then police showed up she was uh rescued it took about two hours to rescue her initially they tried to just like lower the crane or move it but the area that they were going to let her down in wasn't suitable to have someone let down and in order to move the crane the sway or the torque would have caused her to fall off so they actually had to get the fire department to climb up which took about two hours shimmy down and then she was lowered in a harness into a nearby park where she was immediately handcuffed um, and put on a stretcher and charged with um, six counts of public mischief and she spent the night in jail the following morning on April 27th, she appeared before a judge who granted her $500 bail and then she vanished. So after that, it was all just kind of speculation. Like, who is she? What did she do? Is is this chair girl wasn't there yet, but people were kind of saying, like, is this a chair girl sort of thing where it's just a stunt? I personally had my own thoughts at the time. I thought it for sure had to be a stunt because I couldn't believe that anybody would climb a crane, like a, f- a f- crane. She climbed to the top. She did it in heels too, which blows my mind completely. But yeah, so we didn't hear from her again until uh, the end of December, where she appeared before a judge and explained why she did what she did. And the transcript was then um, accessed by the media. So the reason for the whole incident was that Marissa had been undergoing or experiencing a bout of severe depression, insomnia, and anxiety, which originally is what prompted her to take on these sort of daredevil tasks. She never really wanted to be a, an Instagram celebrity or she never wanted to go viral. She was just trying to live. And she found herself constantly just under a lot of stress, unable to sleep and dealing with a lot of post-traumatic stress. For whatever reason, I don't care. I don't think that the public has any particular right to know why she was going through, you know, her dark moment of the soul. And she had said that she climbed up Um, just to take a selfie but slipped fell down very briefly considered jumping just being like well I'm screwed now so I can't get back up she tried to get back up realized that it would be impossible Um, briefly considered jumping before the police were called I don't know if she called the police herself or someone else called when they saw her but I think she called them herself because when people had tried to communicate with her while she was up there it was people were unable to hear her because she was so high in the air um the prosecution sought to give her like community service and a fine and all that sort of stuff and maybe even give her jail time but after speaking before the judge when she cried and explained her circumstances and how sorry she was that she was now in therapy that she had quit alcohol and was seeking to better herself and that she was just basically at rock bottom at that time the judge was very moved by her and said that she presented no danger to society that she learned her lesson and gave her six months to pay a very small fine i think it was like a couple hundred bucks The fireman who rescued her actually offered her a job. It was kind of a joke, but he offered her a job after he rescued her because it took him almost two hours to get to her with all of his gear and his pulleys and his harness on, and he's a professional climber. And she did it completely freehand in, I think, like under an hour in heels, which was pretty amazing to him. So she she really kind of like blew a lot of people away. And the whole time that she sat up there, she was just cool as a cucumber. She remained very calm and sort of like stoic and almost catatonic like during all of her public appearances appearances and while she was being rescued. Um, I hope that she is getting a good eight hours of sleep these days. It was a really sad story to look into because I I had obviously known of Crane Girl because I could see her from my window. Like when it happened, I could look out the window and literally see Crane Girl happening before my eyes. And it was just such a mysterious circumstance. But then you come to find out that she was just, you know, she was just going through some, she was having a bad day, man. She's having a really bad day. And all signs now point to say that she's having much better days. Uh, but she's completely revamped her her social media. It's very difficult to find anything about her. And I don't really feel that I'm entitled to find anything about her. But I did want to share that story of Crane Girl just specifically because I hate Chair Girl so much. And I want it to let people know that this wasn't the act of someone who was trying to be famous. This was basically a cry for help. So yeah, so thank you for listening to me today and be kind to each other. Thank you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.